Hey guys, this is Jason with GuruInc.com. Today we're going to go over how to screen print heat transfers, um, single color and multiple color. I'm going to go over a few things. All of our products we're getting from Ryanette at SilkScreenSupplies.com and we'll go over each of those and the best ways to use them. So we're going to start with our artwork. This is going to be a, a one color on a white shirt. We're also going to do a two color on a black shirt. There's two different processes for doing this. Um, when you get to the dark room, you're going to want to remember to flip your films. We're going to be printing backwards since we're printing a transfer. Or if you mirror your image in Photoshop, you can um, output it regular. What we're working with is a 15 by 15 heat transfer. I'm going to try to maximize my print space with my 13 by 19 films. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm outputting it about full length of this. I'm not using center crop marks or any registration marks because it's a one color image. We're going to go over some stuff today which we found works for us personally. Um, there's a lot of different ways like anything in screen printing, you know, foiling, simulated process, different artists like different things is kind of a preference. But um, if you follow these directions, your wash life, uh, because we've trial and error this all, um, is going to work better than any method that we personally came across. The important process here, the really important step, remember to flip your screen. So generally you would have these burn regular, but we're going to do a negative because we're doing a transfer. So that's important. Um, I'm sure you'll screw that up sometimes, but it's just important to remember to flip them. For the screen printed transfers, you're going to want to use like a 110 mesh up towards a 200 mesh. I wouldn't go any higher than that. Avoid half tones or small details. Just like any other screen, we're going to just wash it out normal and let it dry. For everything at Guru Inc, we use SilkScreenSupplies.com. Uh, I've talked to a lot of printers who use different transfer inks. It's unnecessary. Go with the Ryopake standard plastic ink. That way you're not sitting on a bunch of ink you don't use. We use the hot peel transfers. Uh, we use the Ryanet adhesion powder. Like I said, the Ryopeg standard plastisol and the international coatings transfer backing adhesive by Ryanet. Of course, all our squeegees, mess tapes, everything else we get right through them too. You'll notice the Ryanet logo on one side, all white on the other. This is your print side. You're going to want to run it through the conveyor dryer before you print. This is going to prevent shrinking if you have to flash and if you don't have to flash on a single color design you're still going to want to do this. It's going to help with the curing process. So as this comes out you can uh, you know, do a few hundred of these at a time if you want and have someone catch them. Uh, we like to run them through the day we get them and then they're good for weeks or months. Uh, it's important to remember on this process just to run them through like you were curing a shirt. You know 300, 320 degrees. Before we start printing, after you've ran all your transfer paper through, we're going to speed our dryer up. Uh, we want these to be curing about 240 to 280 Fahrenheit. Now that the dryer's sped up, we're going to start printing. I'm going to flood this design and give it about two pretty hard pulls. Unlike multicolor design, I'm not going to be using my flash. I'm going to take this right over to the adhesion powder. Now just like glitter on blue when you're a kid, you're going to completely cover your design. We use a paint roller and just dip it in this adhesion powder. You'll notice where it's black is the wet ink. Once we cover it, you'll notice it kind of doles out with the white. It's really easy to tell if you miss a spot. It's going to be a lot darker. So go back on it and just completely cover that back up. Now once the whole design's been covered, give it a shake and knock off any excess powder. This is messy, so I wouldn't recommend doing it around customers' garments. Then, you're gonna run this through the sped up dryer. It's gonna hit about 240. I like to preheat my garment just for a few seconds to get any wrinkles or moisture out. Uh, 
you're going to want to use heavy, medium to heavy pressure. Uh, we're going to take this heat transfer, put it about two to three fingers down. And at 350 Fahrenheit, we're going to apply for 15 seconds. Now this is the premium hot peel, so right away I'm just going to take this and peel it off. You'll notice that I don't have any leftover ink. You'll have, you will have a residue where your image was, but you're not going to have dark patches of ink. If you do, you need to adjust your temperature and or your pressure. So what's cool about these transfers, um, we've had customers with three or four print locations, we fit them all on one transfer. Uh, so we cut out the bottom of this design for our new Guru logo tees. Um, that's going to be on the front and we just cut off the bottom, put it across the shoulder blades. Once these transfers have been ran through the conveyor, they're good for like two years. So you can stack them, take them to events. Uh, a lot of people ask us why we print these. Uh, we have some customers who order a thousand shirts a year from us, but some days they only need three um, with the same design. So we print four or 500 of these at a time and store them in a customer file, and then heat press them on demand. Another cool thing is for a live event printing, um, so your customers, not or you, aren't sitting on five, six hundred printed shirts. These are a lot cheaper than printing on a t-shirt. 